how did you know you were depressed i wouldn't say like i'm this whole depressed free person no it's something that is a continuous struggle we'll technically not feel like getting out of bed and you just have to ground yourself and remind yourself of the things that you have done or the progress that you have made I don't know if this will be like another essay type question because <laughs> you said my first question was the hardest question ever. I didn't you mean. You can't go any harder than that, honestly. Okay. <laughs> what has your life on Hi-Fi? Question has my life on Hi-Fi. You're listening to Life on Hi-Fi, the podcast, and I'm your host, Dominic Justina. It really doesn't matter if I create a masterpiece or not. It doesn't matter who likes it as long as i'm enjoying the process that's all that matters follow me as we talk about relationships love purpose passion you name it focusing on what you have versus what you don't have uh, can be a huge game changer a public expression of freedom is just i don't know like it was so 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 liberating for me do what you have to do yeah. take some time off if you need to but when all is said and done you got to keep moving forward let's commit to living our best lives together shall we i do want to get into more of your journey so some difficulties that you've had to overcome while establishing establishing yourself as an artist and i do know that you were struggling with depression how did you know you were depressed and what that felt like um i first picked it up um when i was doing when i was still in, in doing my degree that's when i picked it up will technically not feel like getting out of bed like okay um i just don't want to do today today is just not existing let's get rid of today so it was also a struggle transitioning into um the career so now i'm in a place where okay i have more of something that is you know pushing me or something that is exciting and vibrant and it's more aligned with my personality but i still have that thing it's like it's an imbalance so um actually i had to be on um antidepressants at the time and this continued so it's not as bad as it was and it fluctuated so um when dealing with things like this i do suggest professional help because switching careers was just not the only thing that could help the situation so it helped a bit but because i'm i don't have things tying me down so I feel like I would be a lot worse, but it still exists and it's still something that needs to be treated. Do you feel like it's something that took a toll on your ability to tap into your creative, your creative side as well? I feel like I leaned on my creative side to, to manage those things because even <clears throat> now I wouldn't say like I'm this whole depressed free person. No, it's something that is a continuous struggle. Um so you it it takes a lot it takes a lot of work so currently i would have a list of things that i know that okay when i get up in the morning this is what i do this is what i need to do um to feel um better or put myself in this place to be doing work because otherwise if you're not disciplined with yourself you're just going to dwindle back down into um the ways that you were before so can you because I love talking about self-love on this podcast and like routines and stuff that people different things people are doing can you share some of those things you do in the morning so currently I have a thing where I'm like okay I get up I make my bed first thing I have to make my bed take everything off my bed any junk anything um then after I make my bed I tend to always like do my eyebrows and my makeup and stuff like that so clear up my makeup pack up the boxes and stuff like that so that's how I start my morning then I brush my teeth and then I get something to eat so once I start with you know because before all of this um before recently these these mundane tasks tasks that just seem like nothing can be extremely difficult just getting up can be extremely difficult so Mm -hmm you um have to push yourself into the space where you're like okay this is what I gotta do so me for me personally when I make my bed my bed sets a tone for the rest of my day so yeah that's that's how my list starts and then I have like regular things like I try to probably eat a fruit every day or some you know just to keep um some kind of routine where I'm like okay this is discipline you know Mm -hmm. routines help 
Um, I'm not diagnosed with with uh with depression, but I do know I struggle with a routine. A routine is hard. And I remember the last time I talked to you, you were saying how self-discipline is is like one of those things that you've been working on. How are you able to encourage yourself to keep up with the routines when you know nobody's over your, your head with a stick necessarily saying you have to get this done or else, but you know, you're doing it for your well-being. And sometimes when it comes to yourself, it's easy to, you know, put it on the back burner. Um, and and goals is what I used to say on course. So, Mm -hmm. um, I think about where I'm now and I think about where I want to be. I sometimes Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm in an okay space, you know, um, but where do you want to go? So, and I'm very, I have very wild, I would call them wild, but they're very big dreams. So it's just like, okay, when you're in this moment and you feel horrible, what is it that you can do right now that can align you with, with something that you want to achieve? So sometimes we sit down and we're down in the dumps because um, you're at a point and you're like, I should have been at another point by now or I should have achieved something else by now. Um, and those are the things that kind of get us down or discouraged or we compare ourselves to other people where they are in their life. And we're mm-hmm. like, okay, um, you know, so it happens to the best of us and you just have to ground yourself and remind yourself of the things that you have done or the progress that you have made and pretty much just focus think about that think about where you want to go and it the energy somehow comes from those thoughts yeah I felt every word of that I think the way I used to phrase it is understanding your why because that sometimes so much more tangible to do than to try and figure out how to do it. Like the why is how we're powered. But again, introspection and like being able to connect with um, ourselves and that inner voice is important. Thanks for sharing that. And would you say that it's like how you're managing now is based on those routines? Are there, is there anything else that you've picked up that you've found has helped to manage um, your emotional state have are you still using medication or have you been able to find like other things outside of medication um and your routine no I'm not on anything right now pretty much it's a lot of discipline um it's much harder I have to say I'm not I'm thinking about what else I would do to um to kind of ground myself I just do things that I enjoy I guess Mm-hmm. So, like I enjoy music and I enjoy writing so um I try to do activities that you know kind of just mellow me out yeah I love that okay well thank you for sharing um I don't know if this will be like another essay type question because <laughs> you said my first question was the hardest question ever I didn't you mean can't go any harder than that honestly <laughs> okay <laughs> all right you ready then yeah why do you return to art and why do you lean on your creativity i return to art and lean on my creativity i guess it's it's the fulfillment that comes from it so um it's the fulfillment of creating like putting something out or making nothing into something mm. give you that boost and that you feel like you're putting something out into the world. So that's one. And two, when you are putting out into the world, other people are seeing this and they're being inspired. So the idea of inspiring somebody else is also, you know, one of those things that I would like mix into that bunch. So. Couldn't have said it better myself. Couldn't have said it better myself. Honestly, I, yeah, I relate to that so much. It's like being able to, and that's why I think like art and I should even just say like creativity is so much more than just like being like a visual artist and whatnot. It's being able to manifest something like an idea or a thought, I think, and creating something with it tangible that you can actually say like, here is this used to be like a, like a second guess or, or again, like a thought, but you know, I was able to bring life to it. And that's one of the most amazing feelings, most fulfilling feelings. If you are in touch with anybody, in touch with your creative side, be it like if you're in business or finance or whatever, like you will feel like the most empowered version of yourself because there's something, 
there's this difference in energy that you feel when you're consuming and then when you kind of shift towards like being more creative so yeah that is powerful and I know you mentioned you have big dreams um we loved we love to hear it love to see (laughs) keep on going is there anything that you'd like to share um it would be some form of infiltration into um schooling here Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. also I would use an avenue, some form of creative avenue. I don't know if I would use, um, I, would, I could probably use illustrations and books and stuff like that to um, kind of get into the school system and um, teach more um, modern value through these mediums. So that's something that I want to achieve. Um, something that I've been thinking about a lot recently. So a lot of, even with um, Jamaican uh, folklore and all that stuff. So it's all tied into, you know, like culture and keeping things alive as well as mixing it with with new ideas. Mm. So you want to innovate current culture and start with youth. Everything starts with youth. So I think that would be incredible. When you say modern values, so you mentioned you used to be Christian, like hardcore, and you're no longer Christian. Is there a faith that you follow or like sense of spirituality that you follow to help keep you grounded? Um, I'm a very spiritual person. I don't uh, limit myself to a religion, but I don't, I also don't judge anybody that's a part of a religion. It's just not for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I also don't encourage what how could I say this? I did like, for example, if you want to be a Christian, that's on you. That's actually none of my business. So um, with, with things with religion and values and stuff like that, I think that everybody is privy to their own experience and they see life through their own lens and they experience things through their own lens. So um, you hear somebody talk about something that they, they experienced and then another person will be looking at them like they're crazy. So it's, something that I think is you know just concentrated on on each individual experience yeah so yeah yeah so oh and my spirituality it's yeah I'm pretty fluid I don't I don't I don't like the idea of early I don't believe in religion per se so pretty much anything that has to do with any other realm or any other spiritual being is something that I think that I connect with personally or at home like I just close my eyes and connect with whatever I think I can connect with or I like some candles or something I just be at peace with myself so Mm -hmm. I'm not the typical person that would go to church um Oprah just says this thing that I really love and she's she has so many conversations on her platform with so many people from different faiths that's where I started to learn more about like Buddhism and um, other religions out there and that's how I started to also identify more as like a spiritual person and she says you know be it you name them God the universe whoever you call them I love when she says that because it just it just showing a sign of respect to however you believe that the divine shows up divine energy shows up Um, so but I, I asked you because I know that with our as specifically with the artists I've I've been in conversations with so far, spirituality is usually something that they lean on in order to stay grounded and tuned in. So yeah. Yeah, I think I do that as well. Um a lot of the times when even I'm having a difficult time, it's something that um I would lean on or I would find some amount of comfort in. So Yes, we. I personally don't call it, you know, a god or Allah or anything like that. But I do believe in a higher, you know, presence. So. Okay, cool. I respect that. Um, and of course, I love, I love thinking about the areas that we're able to touch and the households that we're able to infiltrate just through the little audio waves of this podcast. So I'm gonna ask you a question and like. I would say keep, I guess, younger artists in mind who probably are looking for for some sort of inspiration. Um, But uh, what are 
three lessons that you learned so far that you wish you knew when you just started out in art and when you decided to make it a business? Three lessons. Um, I wish I knew the amount of discipline it would have taken. I wasn't prepared for the amount of discipline that um, would have been needed, especially given my mental state. Um, so, hmm. I know it's a tough question. Yeah, it's a tough question. <laughs> and whereas I'm like, give me three, okay? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Um, hmm. networking. Um, I wasn't prepared for that amount of, you know, the need for networking. Because if you're the type of person where you don't like to talk to people, you don't like to reach out to people, right, that's going to be very detrimental to um you growing. And even in my depressive states, I've had phases where I just do not want to use social media, and it was damage. It was damaging me. Um, it was hurting my brand. So you have to also put that into consideration. Are you in the position to just go out there, put out content, reach out to people? And um, also, if you're not consistently, because after a while, you get to a point, if you're doing it for years, you get to a point where people start to come to you. And when you're at that point, um, yeah, it takes a lot of work to get to that point. So I wish I knew that as well. I knew it was going to be a lot of work, but um, it, the importance of it, like your entire thing is, is reliance on that. Um, so yeah, had to be in the space to always put yourself out there. Thinking on the number three. Hmm. And while you think, I'm already thinking, like you mentioned, it's hard. And I realized like, if you want to be successful at anything, it's hard. Like you needing to be a lab technician <laughs> to study for that would have been hard. The benefit of this is that you're doing something that ultimately fuels you. Mm-hmm. Something else that I would, number three would be um, I wish I had like more access or more knowledge of things in the creative world before I went off to college. So that's something that I wish that I was exposed to. Um, I wish somebody would have laid down some some ground, some ideas and some stuff before, you know, I got to a point where I had to go through all of that to finally discover this whole other realm. So I think it should be more, um, you know, accessible. I think it's more accessible today but when I was that age, I didn't really have that information to fall back on. Did you, when so you say we, more resources, do you mean, because they're art classes, you mean like an art class or like um, art classes in high school? Not even just that, because I had art class in high school, but mm-hmm. it's, it's more so not exposing people to, to things that are very much way more expensive than an art class. So um, you have people who do um, rendering, animation, architecture in the sense of, you know, all those things are not pushed to the forefront. They, they're just like, okay, you know, okay jobs. Everything else is just, that everything related to that is on the background. And there are even jobs, because I think architecture is popular, but you have jobs that are even higher paying than, things that you would you'd consider traditional and you don't even know that these jobs exist. And even today, you have um, social media marketing, you have um, more social media geared types of jobs, you have full, um, full on graphic designers and stuff like that. And they're not yeah. deemed as important as they should be deemed. So coming up, I wish like I knew, you know, of these kind of roles in society and even watching them <clears throat> from I was that age and developing. Because um, when I was in high school, it was just Facebook. 
was it just facebook like facebook was the thing and then coming up now you have tiktok you have all these other things that are just and then they, they just become an actual job because even the other day i was talking to my mother and she was i was i had to be like you do know that there are people that do social media as a living like they make posts as their job like this job didn't exist way back when so it's more so you know um i wish back then because i really think that back then those jobs were also there but they weren't as prevalent as now and people didn't really know about that and people don't really put much importance on that so yeah i think that's 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 the third thing that i wish mm -hmm. um i knew from before so i could from high school or from earlier also i would be like yes i want yeah. to be a graphic designer you know yeah 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 for sure i think that's a really good point i think um it goes back to how we started the convo where we were saying self-expression is kind of smuggled at like the youth stage especially in schools so of course they wouldn't be exposing us to all the like career pathways in like even with medicine like there's so many ways you can take it you don't have to be a doctor you could be you can work at a health tech company which I do now <laughs> for my nine to five but like I never knew and then off also with art like there's so many things you can do with art like do you know how, how much animators earn at Pixar <laughs> like <laughs> Do you, do you think that's trivial? That's not trivial money, though. I will tell you that. That's not no trivial money. <laughs> yeah, but and then you have, I was even, recently I was even learning about producers and music and all that stuff. You're not exposed to them. Like, yeah. even sound engineers for movies, like, even when they're doing um those huge productions, directors, mm -hmm. um, film there is such a wide range of things like I wasn't exposed to, to film careers when when I was in high school I didn't think of that as a thing or yeah. I didn't even see much much being a thing that I could look into living in Jamaica you know so, and, and even today so um yeah it's, it's a lot to unpack a lot to unpack yeah. and there are so many industries that fall under the title of art that have so many jobs that even though at my big age, I'm just discovering that these jobs exist. So. Yeah. And there's still, and jobs are being created as we speak. I mean, not like they're <laughs> the way of the world. I'm so passionate about it because the way of the world right now is that we're seeing things form before eyes that never existed like two, three years ago. Like even, I know NFTs is such a huge topic of conversation, especially for artists and like the opportunity that it brings. And as I learn about it, I'm seeing people throw art out there that I've never seen before. Like I saw a piece recently and I had to ask myself, is this person like a video game creator? Because the way, like the level of their animation is just on a thousand. And I've never really seen it as like a GIF 30 second clip before. But in this context, it's just, blowing my mind and yeah just arts taking so many not just art but like careers in general they're taking so many interesting paths that they never took before one thing I had to tell myself was don't be discouraged if you weren't exposed to it in high school the disadvantage is that in 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 high school in Jamaica you have to choose your subjects and you feel like oh I know exactly what I'm going to be now versus what I noticed in North America is they allow you to go th at least in the states but like they allow you to go through without picking subjects and then you go to college and then that's when more expand expansive like majors and stuff are introduced to you mind you you're already not saying you don't have those subjects in your head saying like I have to be a doctor no I'm only going to take medicine you can take journalism you can take art um you can take theory art theory because that helps with like your basic understanding and appreciation for where art started and where it's going you can take film you can that's when you can really explore like university is this place where you're supposed to be able to learn about things that you ne never necessarily did as a youth but even so like even if you don't get that chance what I realized too is it really don't matter <laughs> like I'm, I'm saying it out of privilege but you can learn some of these skills without school like what I'm doing now I never did media 
I didn't know how to edit any of these things before. And I was like, okay, well, there's YouTube and I have time and I'll just use it wisely and just teach myself. Yeah. And so, and like, even at my job, I see engineers like building out, building out the app and stuff. And I'm like, oh, did you go to school for this? And they're like, nah, they just like, they learned on the side after they graduated, they weren't necessarily happy. And they learned on the side and they were, they're not a full-time engineer making full-time engineer money, which again is not trivial, <laughs> but they didn't have to like go to school for it. So I think the world is so open. I'm excited. Like anybody who is kind of feeling like, oh, it's too late. I don't think it's ever too late. I think you can pick up new skills and you can work on them and work to nurture them as well. But I do wish I hope to see the day where we see more exposure to art, even like non-traditional art. Because I, I did art class and I was like my teacher never liked when I did abstract. I always had to do like realism. And even when I did like incorporate abstract, it just wasn't appreciated. So I guess it's hard to break through tradition, but I think we'll get there for sure. Fair. And even with me, everything that I know, I learned from just practice and watching YouTube videos. So it's pretty much a lot having to do with your innate talent and also <clears throat> discipline and practice. So, yeah. you know, because there's always this thing where um, talented people, I'm also one of these persons that used to think like this because it's just like, oh, I'm talented then you know, things should just come to me naturally. Um, no, you have to, you know, put in the work, put in the practice and make yourself better. There's no, there's no, there's never a time where you're like the best I can be right now. Exactly. There's always room for improvement. All right, Rue. So what has your life on high five? Passion has my life on high five. Ooh.